Okay guys, as a follow-up video to a video that I did talking about the best bushcrafting knife brands out there, today I thought I would talk about the best survival knife brands out there. Now, before we get into this, as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and if you want to see more behind the scenes of the Alaskan Frontier 1, check out the Instagram, it is in the description below. Okay, now let's jump into these brands. Now, similar to my best bushcrafting knife brands, if you guys didn't see that video, this one is going to be uh, about knife brands that I own that I think make a lot of good uh, survival knives in general. Now, as you'll get, as we, as I'll show here, when I talk about survival knives, there are some typical, more, you know, what you would think of as survival knives included in this list, but there are also some brands that make more survival tools that I'm including on this list because ultimately survival is dependent on your location and what you're after. So with a few of these brands, they're going to be more survival tools, machetes. Some of them are going to be more classical survival knives. So without any further ado, now let's actually talk about the brands. Okay, so for me, the first one has to be, and probably my favorite, is Essie. Now, I do have a lot of Essie knives and rat knives from OKC. I kind of group them all in the same general uh, grouping. So when I say Ontario Knife Company's rat line and Essie, they're basically the same. I mean, the rat line is a little bit lesser quality with lesser blade steel and, uh, you know, a little bit less handle uh, design, but ultimately they are the same blade shape and made by the same exact people. So for me, I have four showing here a SC6 and uh, it's a great knife, really fantastic and probably honestly at the pinnacle of you know, SC's survival knives. It's a great size, really usable uh, blade shape and everything. But uh, overall, you know, whether it's the SC6, the Hoogless 2, the Azula 2, uh, there's tons of knives. But what I really like about SC, and I'm going to make another video about this, is that really SC knives are made by survivalists for survivalists. So these guys, you know, the same people that you buy your knife from, you can literally turn around you can literally turn around and, you know, take search and rescue classes from them and or they're actually doing survival uh, or search and rescue operations. You know, these guys are really out there in the field testing their knives, using their knives in survival or search and rescue operations. And they, they teach survival, search and rescue, and they make knives based upon their experiences and the experiences of other wilderness operators, so to speak. So that is really the reason why I have to choose SE because SE's blades and their designs, their blade shape and everything is uh, just, there's so much experience behind it. And whether you pick up an SE4, an SE6, an SE3, you know, any of the whole gambit of knives, uh, you're going to be picking up a really solid blade that has a lot of experience and purpose in its design. Not to mention the warranty is also bomb on these things. You can literally blow them up, send it back, and they'll send you a brand new one. So you gotta love SC for that reason. Okay, the next one is gonna be more of a survival tool brand, and that is going to be Tops. Now for me, Tops, and this one of course is the TB Tracker. I do have many Tops knives, but I wanted to choose this one because this one looks the most like, or really is truly a survival tool and not so much a survival knife. But that is the thing about Tops. They do make some more traditional survival knives out there, and especially Dave Canterbury's uh, knife that he worked with them to design many moons ago. That is more of your traditional kind of search and rescue blade, but they make things like the Tracker, like the Armageddon, like the Steel Eagle, and plenty more knives that look more like tools and have multi-purpose blade shapes and designs. Even things like the Tahoma Field Knife are survival tools that are designed to be used in many different ways. So depending on your applications and your needs, Tops might be a better choice to go for than something like SE, even though Tops is still using the same kind of uh, steel. They're using differentially heat treated 1095, which is going to give you a very tough, very durable blade. 
Ultimately, they are a really solid company and they make really solid tools. Okay, the next one has to be on the list, of course, is Falkneven. Now, this is my A1, but I do have multiple Falknevens, of course, like many of the brands you'll see here. I don't just own one of these brands, I own multiple knives in each brand. But Falkneven has to be on the list because they are more of a traditional kind of survival knife, but they are very well, uh, they're very well adapted to cold climates. Now, of course, Falkneven, if I remember correctly, is in Finland, but I know it's in Scandinavia as a whole, and their knives are very much designed and purpose-driven for cold weather because they live or are at a similar altitude to Alaska, or I should say latitude, uh, not necessarily altitude, but latitude to Alaska. And uh, they, like I said, their knives are very reflective in that, whether it's sheath design being designed to be used with mittens or in conjunction with mittens to the over-molded rubber handles to the very thick, very, you know, abusable blades that they have uh, with any of their knives. Even the F1, which is the smallest in their lineup, still has a very thick uh, full tang stock of steel. Now the VG10 laminate isn't necessarily my favorite, but you can also get better or more upgraded steel options if you're willing to pay the price. However, I will say even at their most base models, the F1, the S1, and the A1 are all very, very solid. You can also get larger survival knives like the A2, which is much, well, maybe not much, but it is noticeably larger than the A1, and uh, that is even more of a complete monster for wilderness survival. Now, of course, mine is set up as an ultimate winter survival blade with a modification covered in another video, but Falkneven, for me, like I said, the reason why they make this list is if you are looking for cold climate survival tools, I feel like all I'm recommending is Falkneven, but if you are looking for a very serious, kind of higher end, a little bit more expensive, uh, cold weather rated survival knife, These, this brand is really worth checking out. And I would say that the S1 and the A1 are probably my top two, maybe the A2 also being on that list, but it is a little bit bigger. Uh, so it depends on what your needs are, but definitely Falkneven has to make the list because they make reliably a lot of good survival knives. Okay, now jumping into a little bit more budget offerings. The first one is going to be Condor. Now I chose the Pterosaur here just because I don't want to constantly be showing off the Bushcraft Parang, but realistically Condor, they do make some more traditional kind of knives, smaller and more budget friendly like the Pterosaur that are certainly well adapted and more traditional in kind of survival knife thinking. Though I think the Pterosaur maybe is a little bit more Bushcrafty, but they make a lot of machetes and larger tools. And I love my Bushcraft craft parang and i think it is a great machete and ultimately if you are looking for larger machete like survival tools condor is definitely worth checking out because they are like i said more budget friendly but they have a good amount of offerings for more exotic type of survival knives and tools so whether you are looking for a smaller kind of survival knife something like the pterosaur is certainly a pretty solid offering it is full tang Okay, last but not least, and maybe the most contentious on this list, a lot of people feel mixed about SR SRKs, but Cold Steel, even if you don't like the SRK, they make a ton of different offerings for survival knives. Now, they don't make as many survival tools, but whether it's their drop forged survival, survival knife or their SRK, they are very well known in the industry and many of their designs have been around for quite some time. I mean, the SRK has been around for about three decades. So whether you like the knife or not, it has been around for a long time. It has built quite a name for itself in the survival uh, industry. And you know, some people will fault these knives and say that they're not well built. I can only speak from my personal experiences, but I've never had a cold steel uh, you know, survival knife that I have had and used that has failed on me. So, you know, I don't like to go out there and say, well, you know, I've heard that there are failures because I haven't personally experienced any and the SRK that I own and the other cold steels and the other cold steels I've owned have been just fine for me. And uh, I have really put them through their paces. You know, this knife does not necessarily look brand new. Hopefully people can see, you know, this knife does not necessarily look brand new. Maybe it could look more well-worn, but uh, for me, this thing looks pretty beat up. So, uh, 
it maybe it's just lighting but overall the uh, SRK is a really solid knife and there are other offerings from cold steel in survival knife kind of uh, builds and overall uh, the other cool thing about cold steel is they have the triad lock so a lot of their folders are very robust and very overbuilt especially a lot of the ad line of folders with triads those are very very strong knives and they are meant to be abused so whether you like the fact of Lynn Thompson and, you know, his crazy over-the-top, you know, demo videos of their tools, it's undoubtable that Cold Steel puts a lot of um, their mindset and effort into making knives and tools that are overbuilt and designed to be used hard. So they kind of have to be on the list for that reason, because survival knives and tools usually end up getting pretty darn abused. So that is basically my top five survival brands. There are other brands out there. And of course, like I said uh, in my previous video about bushcraft knife brands, you know, there are plenty of uh, other good survival and good um, bushcrafting knife brands out there. But these are the brands that I personally own that reliably and repeatedly make really good uh, survival and bushcrafting knives. So, you know, I do really like my Col or my Chris Reeve knives Pacific. It is one of my top survival knives, but Chris Reeve isn't really known for their survival knives. I mean, they do make good survival knives, but they also make good EDC knives. And so for this, I really wanted to focus on knives, uh, knife brands that are, you know, reliably and well known for their survival knives or knives. So that is kind of uh, why I leaned on these brands and why I chose them. So as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.